Why are you shaking your head at me? I'm hungry. <laughs> that is an interesting Just in time. case you guys didn't see. Um, is that yeah. a gaming top? It is also because it's Pac-Man, isn't it? Unbelievable. The retro game. You're listening to The Big Drill. And we are live. Welcome to The Big Drill, guys. Uh, Will is here with me as always. Hi, Garzy. Hello, Will. And I am Garzy, as you just heard. And what are we going to do today? Well, what are we going to talk about instead? Not do. We're going to try and take over the world. Pinky and brain style. We, um, no, we're not doing that. So today we're talking about counting calories. Counting calories. And we'll talk briefly about some diets here and there as well. Yeah, I think that's inevitable. That yeah. will come in. But um, yeah, so the, the idea and, and the, the concept of the calorie and counting it and what experience we've had what experience have you had counting calories, Gazi? Take us on your calorie counting journey. Oh man. Um, so this year I did some very intense calorie counting to the point it drove me to mentally making stupid decisions. <laughs> like I think I've spoken about the protein ball in one of my previous <laughs> podcasts. Where do I you wanna, do you want to just refresh us? Okay, so let's hit, let's let's go back to that. Um, I was doing a cut from January to August, and in January at the beginning it was all right. I was I was steadily decreasing my calories, and I was using my fitness pal, and um, I got a bit obsessed with the numbers. So if I went over a bit, I was like, oh no, the world is going to end. Um, and that's what it makes you you, you think. So um, there was one point where a client, not a client, a member of the gym, brought me a protein ball about that big, tiny. Yes. Whoever is listening on audio will not know how big that is. It but, was about the size of a wall, large walnut. Yeah. In its shell. Yeah. Yeah. And it was it was handmade, homemade, so it was healthy or whatever. But I had, it was late at night and I had finished, I had hit my maximum amount of calories that I could eat. And I was like, oh no, why did she bring me this? I can't eat it. Don't give me this. And then I took it anyway, but I'd left it in my bag. Wrapped up. Wrapped up. Wrapped up. And I refused to eat it until the next day. That's how bad it got with me. At how precise I must be it wouldn't have made a difference in the grand scheme of things it would have been like whatever yeah but it got me into that space where a lot of people do fall and maybe even worse than me of I can't I can't eat one calorie more than I'm supposed to otherwise I have ruined my goals I'll never get the objective I was going to reach now mm. because of a couple of calories so the perception of eating that was a bit disjointed it was wrong fair enough yeah what about you uh, well I, I mean like I was um, a couple of years ago now was I decided to get into what I perceived at the time was going to be the best shape of my life Oh damn! Uh, at the age of thirty, and uh, oh, so you you went round the 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 sun thirty times, and that was the the thirtieth time you was like round the sun. Yeah, yeah, that's what happens, mate. <laughs> yeah, on the thirtieth time, you were like thirty times around the sun is a special amount of time. But well, yeah, it was a bit. It was a bit of a. Therefore, I must. Uh, how old are you, mate? I've only gone around 27 times. Right, so when you get to 30, then... No, but what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. It's a big achievement. So I got to 30, and I thought, I'm going to get in the best shape of my life. And that, for me, meant getting into the best physique. So uh, I went on a uh, holiday, a fitness holiday, with and met a, you know, a, a guy who um, was a coach, and embarked on this fitness journey, which include well, physique journey, which included... Um, calorie counting for um, what would have 
attributed to about a year. So I dieted for 34 weeks, well 34 weeks of calorie restriction uh, and then the rest of the weeks were still calorie restriction but just not to the point of um, being you know, in a deficit that would create a negative energy balance which would mean I'd be uh, losing fat basically. So 30, 34, uh, 34 weeks of that and the nature of calorie counting became quite obsessive to the point where I'd open my iPhone and my thumb would just automatically go onto my fitness pal and I'd flick it open and I'd be like, oh, I'm actually meant to be you know, checking my online banking rather than my fitness pal. But the behavioral roots were like so ingrained by the end of that, it, it became quite, uh, it became obsessive. And when I had times that I was able to, or had like pigeon, you know, sectioned off days or times when I was gonna let myself be a bit freer, I, on occasions, got to the point where I was um, binge eating. So I'd have like two, three hours worth of ingesting food at a ridiculous rate of knots, which then left me um, in a, you know, distended in the stomach, bloated, uh, in a position where realistically, you know, I'd actually vomited a couple of times. So you there did. was some purging as well, which I'm not saying it was solely because of um, the calorie counting and the use and the use of that, but I didn't have a particularly. This it was it was useful at times, but it was also quite adverse at times as well. So the balance, the, the yin and the yang, you know. Yes, it was useful, but also it was quite, it you know, it promoted obsessive behaviours and and it did create a bit of anxiety around um, those kind of, that you know, the, the kind of calorie numbers and stuff. It created a bit of a, a problem, but I you know I got to a great got in great shape, done a done the photo shoot, that was done, and then um, three months after I'm still counting calories. Yeah, that's yeah. And I think you had a similar kind of. Uh, yes, yeah, so I continued. On. I I've actually completely stopped now. Um, with the calorie counting, I haven't. I don't really. I haven't touched my fitness pal in ages now. But there was a period of time where afterwards. I was I was doing it on purpose though. I wanted to steadily start increasing my calories yeah, which is and fine. still having an idea of what's going in and stuff. And then when I reached a point where I was like, eh, I think I got this down now. I now eat. I actually went to Five Guys yesterday. Ooh, Great burger. You devil. And how dare the woman at the till when I ordered my Here large fries <laughs> say, by the way, that's for three people. I responded, listen, <laughs> just give me my large fries. <laughs> True story. Cut your chat. Um, Put them on the plate. I am three people. <laughs> give me my fries. Uh, so yeah, that would I, I didn't it didn't even phase me. But me, while I was counting calories, that would have been like, oh no, I shouldn't. Mm. I did have a bar of chocolate as well, mm. right? like a lot, like with the, the big slab ones. I had half of it. I, I I had a lot of fat yesterday. Basically, is what I'm trying to say. And that would have drove me crazy. Yeah. If I was still counting, because I would have saw the numbers. When you say crazy, you mean you would have been anxious. You would have like. Had I mean, oh my days! What am I doing? Yeah, I yeah. need to go run, or I need to. Go so then do could something. Be, could do some sort of like compensatory behaviour. Yeah. Are you going and running? Yeah, or, which is. Or fasting for like X amount of time the next day. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, today I actually. What time is it? What time is it? I don't know, mate. Five to four. I've eaten once today. Okay. But not because. It's just that when I eat so much the night before. You just fall the next day. Fuck, yeah, like, fuck, no, I didn't even feel like breakfast. No, but those, I mean, to your point, they're about like the kind of that feeling of anxiety or that feeling of uh, needing to do something to compensate for that meal, i.e., additional exercise yeah. or, um, you know, being able to fast or rest like to definitely restrict. Um, for the next day in a kind of objective way is to offset what you've had the day before. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is in some, you know, in, in, um, in the mental health diagnostics question, you know, questionnaire that you, you, you know, you, you can go through and it's something which is, it does tick 
several criteria boxes of um, disordered eating patterns and also like maybe one or two you know kind of like in that in that line which I'm not saying an eating disorder uh, manifested or that is a dis- eating disorder or a disordered eating pattern but it is disordered behavior around yes. eating yes and i definitely had that um and i have i have friends uh close friends which have which have had um those kind of uh behavioral manifestations around that? food. Well, that's that was that's me giving you a plate of dust oh okay <laughs> so i i have i have had um and i've had clients as well you know over the 12 years pt and, and coaching that it's inevitable that you're going to come across people that have neurotic tendencies towards tracking food have you had any experiences so yeah of course um but i do always recommend even if you don't like it i still recommend tracking for maybe a week why so that you have an idea of what you are putting in your body so an awareness raising yeah you got it you got to. and people most of the time don't realize they think oh i'm eating all right and then they don't really and then they and then they will do it and they go oh i was having not enough protein or i was having too much fat and and then they re- and then they can adjust and then they can go back to eating how they were they've just adjusted their portion slightly okay you don't need to count unless they really if they want to then whatever but i'll never be like you ate one gram more fat than you should have you've now lost me as your personal trainer <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah it was, it's not i'm not like you're a harsh coach mate. if i was doing that yeah i would be but no it's it's i i try to give them the freedom of not because I know how obsessive it can be, yeah. And sacrificing your mental health for your physical health, I don't think that's no, a good a trade. It's a different shade of shit, isn't it's it? It's not. It's not a good trade. <laughs> I wouldn't, and vice versa. I wouldn't sacrifice yeah. my physical health for your mental. Yeah, it's, you, you, you've got to find a balance. You've you got to have both. Yeah. You got so sacrificing yeah. one for the other. It's not. Don't do it. No, I think that you know for for all intents and purposes to your point now like I mean any 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 time you want to change your behaviour mm-hmm. well it doesn't matter what it's around it could be around anything but like we'll take we'll take eating because it's what the topic's on right yeah. but it could literally be anything if you want to change your behaviour you first need to be fully aware of what your current behaviours are because otherwise what you know yeah. what you can't really change so with regards to um raising your awareness around what you're actually eating Mm -hmm. i I actually think that tracking is a fantastic idea you know okay so let's say for example let's say for example you get someone that comes comes along and they um want to we can you can go conversely either way so let's say someone wants to lose fat let's say someone wants to put muscle on okay so there's obviously particular you need to be in a deficit you need to be in a surplus you need to have some sort of ballpark figure Mm -hmm. so the way that i think is you can either go for it and go right go track normally two weeks maybe a week two weeks whatever because some things fluctuate um depending on what they're doing socially or depending on what they're doing work wise and you go right okay so here we go this is where you're sitting you're sitting at you're actually sitting at a surplus you're never going to lose fat up up on that kind of threshold Mm -hmm. conversely you're actually in deficit you're going to find it very difficult to put um, you know, muscle mass on whilst you're in, in, in a deficit. So you, you get a gauge there. Now, I actually I actually think, this is how I kind of like think of things, like calorie counting is, you can do it from the offset straight away. Yeah. Like, here we go, bish, bosh, bash, calorie count, there we go, now we know where you are. Or you can promote a bit of like self-exploration for the client. So like for me, and this depends on the client themselves. Mm-hmm, I, definitely. And that's that you gotta be like you, you know, you gotta kinda of gauge it a little bit and go, Okay, I know always lead it, let them lead it. So what would you wanna do? If they jump straight on the calorie count and they're oh, that's what I wanna do, fine. But if they're if they're a bit like mm, I've I've i I've, I've done it before, it didn't end well for mm-hmm. me, I'm like, Okay, well then maybe let's look at something else. So I kind of like leave that to one side as a lever to pull. 
mm-hmm. right? We'll pull some other levers first to get you on your journey, whether it be muscle gain or whether it be um, like fat loss. So we'll, we'll, we'll save that lever till a little bit later on. And then you get them in this situation where they're just making changes that they think are good for them before you even come to calorie yeah. counting. So portion control, cutting out this snack here, um, you know, looking at swapping out processed foods for uh, whole uh, whole foods and like, or, you know better quality, better produced foods rather than um, low quality, high calorie, nutrient low, grab on the go foods. That was a mouthful. I don't know where that came from, but yeah, <laughs> basically like kind of doing that first, and then when they get to that point of going. I've I've done all these things and I've got some progress, but I want some more progress. And you go, okay, now we can dial it in. Yeah. And now we can pull the calorie counting and the calorie tracking. Yeah. That's just how I, you know, because it does depend on the person. It does depend on the person. Yeah. So you can end up with someone, and if you kind of go, well, this is the only way you can make progress. It could just drive them insane, and. I've seen it before. I have seen people, well, I've been one of them, but I've seen other people be like, I don't know, if in the staff room, we have some chocolate or whatever, because, you know, yeah. that's what we do. PTs occasionally PTs, have a bit of chocolate. a bit of cake, whatever it is. A bit of cake, a bit of chocolate. And you offer it around, and then someone's like, no, no, can't eat that. You can see it's a bit like, oh, it wouldn't make... That much difference. You know, but fine. You know, but that's like, but that's, so that's orthorexic eating. So orthorexic eating is where you're in this position where you only eat foods that you have like a hundred percent knowledge of where they come from. Not that you can even know where bloody food comes from anyway, like a hundred percent. But yeah. unless you grow it in your own back garden, and then you're in, then you're in a pretty good, you know, you know, it comes out of your own ground. Yeah. But generally speaking, like orthorexic eating is something where they're like they only eat a quite a narrow selection of foods which is very, um, the quality, the content and the volumes, etc., is very controlled by that person. And they see it as a, a superior way of eating. And they see it as, um, and they, they count all the calories down and they, they know how much is going in. They know the quality of food that's going in. But it, it is a pattern where then, if you were to like offer someone, I don't know, like, oh, do you want some of this homemade lasagna? Yeah looks bloody lovely nice layers of cheese lovely meals. but I can't put it in my fitness pal oh, no I can't put it in therefore I can't eat it how do it. I do this yeah. oh no I can't eat it sorry and I'm like may eat the lasagna yeah. it looks lovely I yeah. love it I love double portions I oh, know the twins would have <laughs> the twins would have the, twins would have the whole thing yeah. uh, we have uh, colleagues who are twins who are absolute monsters they're huge Not monsters in a good way they're, they're big guys and they will never say no. Anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Any L-E. piece of food. They'll eat. But Follow um, their example, guys. Eat everything and anything. They are, they are, <laughs> they are powerlifters, so they, they have a little bit more uh, energy expended. And also, they're still growing at the age of they're 20. 20, so. they're still going. I think they both want to reach like 200 centimeters or something. But anyway. We digress. Ask me. I can see there's a pensive question there on the is. tip of your tongue. Okay, so it's we have these I would don't want to call them fads. But there's diets out there that try and claim Here we go. We're the best way of eating. First of all, let's just let's just clarify what diet means. Diet means a way of eating. So everyone's on a diet. Regardless if you're restricting or not. Mm-hmm. So, I'm on a diet. I just eat whatever I really want. But then there's specific diets. And there is stuff like keto, I'm sure everyone's heard of, intermittent fasting, veganism. What else is there? High fat. High fat. Carb, well, that's cute. Atkins, yeah. yeah. Low carb. Why okay. is it we have to label ourselves and restrict ourselves? Why, why do we have to go so far into one part of a diet? Why do we have to go 
I'm on keto. Sorry, I slammed the table. Why do I? No, no carbs for me. I've got to have that high fat shit. Not, not actual shit. High fat food. If it's got carbs in it, I don't want it. Why, why can't it go? Why can't, or if you're fasting, I can't eat until 2 p.m. It's 1.59. I have to wait one minute before I can eat. Step away from your meals. You have one minute remaining. You can't, I can't eat this until that clock that was made by a man says, or woman, says 2 p.m. Why is that? Why, 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 Will? Tell me. Why, why do we have to follow those diets? Why do we feel like we need to? Um, well, that's, I mean, that's a very good question. I think, like, there's this, there's almost like this kind of search for, I mean, firstly, let's just, let's just, um, reiterate that any restrictive diet works if you're in, if you're in a calorie deficit, and that calorie deficit will ultimately, um, Produce an en- negative energy demand, and, and then you'll burn the energy that you've got stored in. So the you're body. telling me that it's not because I'm eating less carbs on a keto diet. There are there are certain like if you have if you eat less if you. Eat, I thought carbs were the enemy. I thought they were m- the reason I couldn't lose weight, so I took them away. If you eat less carbs, there is there is research that would suggest that you. Um, you feel fuller afterwards and you know if you've been restricted on carbs for a while you 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 feel fuller but the the research around it is friggin ropey and it's just like the best and most obvious thing that you're doing why that particular approach is working let's say the low carb or whatever is because you are on a calorie restrictive you know, area you've you've restricted yourself down. You're in a deficit, and that's right. Conversely, if you're looking to put muscle on, it's the calorie surplus that's required in order for recovery, in order for protein, um, you know, to be utilised and, and muscle tissue to be, you know, kind of layered and, and produced in the body, right? So, in that sense, you have this. Now you've got this. Rather than you get this kind of like uh, underpinning. Uh, kind of premise of adherence is the most important thing. Doesn't matter actually what it is. If you're in a fa- if you're in a negative uh, energy demand, then you're in a situation where you're it will work as long as you can keep it going through adherence, which I think is fine. But I mean, let the end. I mean, Russell Kane. I don't know if you've seen. Do you follow Russell Kane? No. Oh, this li- literally. Tell me. Literally, this guy went on to his um Instagram, and he done this. You know, this like short little skit of um, like diets and like people promoting diets, and it, it's down to capitalism, right? It's down mm-hmm. to the consumer product, right? That's why people, that's why di- the diet industry is, you know, and counting calories, whatever, is, is being aware of it. It's a huge, huge factor. I mean, food is something we all need, therefore, it makes a lot of money, yeah. And like the diet industry is worth hundreds of millions of pounds, so. You know, he jumped on his on his Instagram and he basically tore it the diet the diet approach apart. And he was like, I- "I've got the fucking answer right here. Why don't we just eat a moderate amount of ex a ma- moderate amount of food yeah. from all food groups? We don't have to be one sp- one particular, just nice and moderate. Go and do a moderate amount of exercise and enjoy your fucking life." And it's just like, well, he's got a point, really. You can't. You can't um, knock him for having that, having that kind of outlook because it gets a little bit out of hand. Yeah. So why is it? Why do people find it so hard to enjoy a moderate diet? I'm gonna just call it a, that's the best diet out there, the moderate diet. The moderate diet. Why can't? Why? Why do people find it so tough to go? Oh, I'll try that. I just I would try and eat everything in moderation and see what happens. Well, I mean, the the, the psychology of keeping things moderate is is a whole that's a whole other podcast. That is a whole other podcast. Keeping keeping yourself on an even keel. Life life isn't an even keel anyway. So, like from a calorie counting point of view, so let's bring it back to calorie counting, right? Mm-hmm. So 
So you got you got my fitness pal, or there's a few other ones that are out there. Lose it, chronometer, spark people, just to name spark a spark people. I don't know. I looked I looked earlier on, and I, I that sounds it, a bit aggressive. Or well, one of them is called Fat Secret, which I think is rather a interesting name for a calorie counting piece of software. But never mind. I looked on them. I looked on them. I've only ever used my fitness pal. Yeah. Uh, I don't use it at the moment. But every now and then I do just like check in and make sure that I'm, you know, if I'm looking to achieve a certain goal. But um, basically, the, the, this whole kind of like idea of you, you're on your counting your calories, you're using my fitness pal, and some days you might eat a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So you might go over your calories by 200, 300 calories. The next day you, you might go like under it a little bit more, um, which means you're back on even. Mm-hmm. next day you might go over 500 calories and then the day after that you might go over 300 so now you're in 700 calories but actually the third day you end up not you know you miss a meal maybe because you're just so friggin busy at work or you've just gone beast mode or you've gone beast in the gym mode in the gym and you've lost like half a day calories I was going to say <laughs> 700 calories extra but well yeah. maybe but I think from if you look at it from a point of you know your, your intake, so not not to worry about your expenditure, but okay. Your, but your but your intake. Okay, so fine. you've gone five hundred, three hundred. So you're eight hundred over. I might have said seven hundred earlier. Seven hundred, yeah. Which was poor maths. Yeah. But so you're eight hundred over, and then you're in a situation where the next day you might miss a meal, which effectively brings you back down to maybe just being two hundred over or something like that, depending on how big your meal is. Could be a full meal, which could mean you're actually back. In a better position. Is that the chopper? Maybe. The feds. So, essentially, this whole kind of up and down, up and down, up and down of um, kind of like peaking and troughing, going over, coming under, going over and coming under, is essentially, if you work it out and it evens itself out, it's a moderate way of eating, right? Yeah. It's a normal, it's a normal kind of like some days you're over, some days you're under, some days you're over. And... Arguably, using something like My Fitness Pal to get an understanding of your eating habits and your eating behaviours, your calorie intake, and also, yes, your energy expenditure to a certain degree, though I would hugely question the accuracy yes. of that. Yeah, I, I don't even bother no. tracking that. I just go to the gym. Yeah, sure. Tra- and I won't even put in, what's the point? It's not going to know how much I burnt. Well, there's too many there's too many variables, exactly. so it yeah. becomes quite inaccurate. So in, in essence, this whole kind of up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, some days, eventually, if it's evening out over a seven seven day period, two, a two week period, a whole month, a whole six months, your weight's going to stay pretty consistent, mm-hmm. and that's moderate. So actually, this whole kind of like dipping in of like being a little bit more extravagant going out having a meal here or there and then like tightening tightening it up a little bit now some some people liken it to the idea of a bank balance some days you spend a bit more some days you save a bit more and Mm -hmm. you know but eventually you don't want to be in a situation where you're massively um in debt in debt you know so in that sense you kind of like you can see that analogy quite well and it does work i think it's a little bit it can be a little bit overbearing in the sense where even when like I don't I don't register how much I spend or how much I save necessarily each each um each day, but at the end of the month I look and you know kind of like see how we're doing and so on and so forth. So I think like if you can position yourself as a calorie counter, but it, and kind of understanding how much you're intaking over a period of time, and then come away from that. And not use it as a necessity, but use it as a checking or awareness raising tool rather than an ongoing crutch to your way of living. That's how I personally use something like calorie counting. So that's great. Usually people who go gym. I love the way you say go gym. What else do you do? Go gym. Go gym. Or maybe partake in sports or whatever. Yeah. You usually have a, a decent idea, a decent set of knowledge 
on the calorie counting side of things. Mm -hmm. What about the people who have no interest in fitness whatsoever? I think this is where the real issue lies. I have friends who are a lot younger than me. They're about 18, 19. Whippersnappers. Uh, met them through gaming, actually. Of course you did. And are they better than you? Yeah. Of course they are. More time on their hands, you know. Just saying. That's the only reason. And we have a group chat for the gaming chat. Uh, we talk or whatever. And a lot of the times people will send in their meals knowing that I'm a personal trainer. And they... I love it when people do that. They boast with pictures of them ordering pizza and KFC and fried chicken and, and like this is sometimes for breakfast and breakfast. burgers and have they, been, have they been gaming all night? Sometimes, yeah. And this is like nearly daily. And I'm like, guys, can you stop eating this stuff? <laughs> like you're kidding yourselves right now. They just don't understand the implications of eating that way the same way I did not understand sure when I was at that age I was eating fast food every day too I was like I'm invincible but there's a point where your body goes I give up man I can't and it's just a point where you've over the time compound accumulation of calorie surplus or you've banked up a lot of debt yeah that's what you've you're, done you're... <laughs> and now it's time to pay it's time to pay now um <laughs> The knowledge isn't there for them. Is this something we should be teaching kids in school? A hundred percent. So you would teach kids how to calorie count? I would... What I think, in the sense whereby... No, firstly, you don't, you don't teach kids how to calorie count. You don't focus on... A child on, on on that and go you need to count calories mm -hmm. you don't do that but what you do is you teach a child about the nutrients within a food mm -hmm. the calorie density this is a high cat this you know you actually educate a child around nutrition it should be part of a syllabus it should be taught uh, very early on you know you 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 should have positive eating habits um ingrained from a school you spend most of your time at school yeah. right when you're younger I'm, I'm just thinking do you know how fun it would be to do experiments in science where you get like you go down to your chicken shop as a teacher you grab a meal that the kids always get you know four wings and chips or whatever you calculate four wings and chips that's what I used to get one pound every day I mean, that's go, ridiculous one yeah. pound four wings and chips every single day after school okay you didn't know I mean, who would say no to that? Do you know how cheap that is? That's ridiculous. But anyway, so let's say the teacher grabs that, calculates uh, the amount of calories, breaks down the, you know, rough idea. She, the teacher's not going to know exactly. And then goes in a science class, how long do you guys think it will take to burn this? And I don't know, maybe get them to try and... Do you know how fun that would be? But it would actually teach them at the same time of... yeah you eat this every day you're going to have to try and work this hard every day to try and just burn off that meal like, so there's two things there's, I think I absolutely agree you know, that's, that's definitely something which would bring an, an, a kind of like an understanding around calories but in a very exploratory scientific way I had a two experiences of, of, um, around <laughs> calories at school um, one of which was putting a what's it on the end of a stick I don't know what it was some sort of like implement that held it above a Bunsen burner safely okay and then burning and measuring what the energy the energy that it, that it created yeah. right as it burns so that's the kind of that investigate I mean that was about as far as it went but like in the um, the years of uh, like education which you have to go through mm -hmm. I actually I actually decided to do food tech but then when we went to a and then the, the other experience I had was when our biology teacher used to randomly leave the classroom go down to Chuck's meat wagon 
which was down the road parked in the lay-by and ordering himself a, a large donner and chips whilst we were doing our experiments and then he would come back and be like eating all these calories and we used and he used to say I'm getting my calories in I'm getting my calories in <laughs> as he was plowing through this massive donner kebab how is this how was this allowed <laughs> and I was just like sitting there going going sir sir I, just an idea do you think you should not eat all that and he's like what are you talking about I'm, I'm a grown man I need my calories oh wow so you kind of like oh, I don't know whether that I don't know whether that adversely affect me or not because I watched over the year him get larger and larger oh did he he actually Donna, got Donna kebab after Donna kebab I mean that's what it's going to do and I was just like and you know so the two experiences I had was a teacher that would, was ingesting a hell of a lot of calories and a burning a watsit or I think it might be a Cheeto or something I don't know but that's really it, yeah that's all the education I received about kind of until I went on to do food tech so I think there's definitely this like around the understanding of food the nutrients the density of calories the density of the nutrients within the food it, it's it's a huge factor that's it's just not taught at school it's it's and if it yeah. is taught in some schools it's not taught to, to the uh to the level that it needs to be yeah but I think one actually there's this um did you want to say anything then? I did, I did no, I just no, no, no. You? I, was, I was waiting for you. Oh. I want to see what notes you've got, I've got there. I've got a little note. Got your notes. It's a very small note. Um, so, for me, there's this kind of like, uh, just recently, kind of research has been looking at actually that a calorie isn't necessarily um, absorbed through the body. Well, it's not the, the, what is a calorie externally to the body once ingested isn't necessarily worth a calorie. Um, and this is now kind of like adding a question mark over the whole premise of calorie counting anyway and again it comes down to individual differences primarily because different people um, absorb digest food differently different speeds um, different gut bacterias so on and so forth and these kind of variables affect like the absorption and the, the efficiency of how much energy you actually get from um, that calories. The thermic value of food as well. So to digest food mm -hmm. takes energy and some foods require high energy to, di to digest them. Therefore, like the actual calorie you get, so a percentage of that is needed in order to be able to digest it. So to as an example, we both buy a Five Guys burger. We put the exact same toppings in. Even They even weighed the burger for us. So it weighs exactly the same. You're saying that just because we ate the exact same thing, it doesn't mean we both ingested, or we didn't both attain the same amount of calories from that burger. Depends on how you digest the food and depends on how I digest the food. And how much you absorb and... There are, there are, there okay. are. I mean, there's the research that's being done at the moment is, um, kind of looking at different avenues and it, you know, kind of like going down different pathways, so to speak. But there is this, there is the connotation that it might not necessarily be quite as clear cut as you at a burger that was five hundred calories, I at a burger that was five hundred calories. We both receive five hundred calories. From it's it's that not meal. as simple as calories in versus calories out shock it might not be no oh no but I think that that's you know when you think about how um, the idea of the exercise the calories burnt whilst exercising I mean for years we've known that's a pretty fucking loose number anyway mm -hmm. you know when you look at some things you go hang on a minute you're telling me that I burnt almost 750 calories and I'm barely sweating. In a in a thirty minute spin class, it's like no, no, yeah. you didn't, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. sorry, you didn't. You yeah. just didn't burn that many. Yeah. You just didn't, mate. Yeah. Is Come that on, is mate. that how you break it to them? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> mate. I'm sorry. How many calories? In thirty minutes, mate. No, you didn't. No, no, I'm afraid no, you didn't. You'd be mate. extremely hungry right now. <laughs> so, like, we know that we know that, and again, that's because of individual differences, right? Efficiency mm -hmm. of if someone run, if someone runs, um, if someone runs. Um, let's say for 5k and they're mm. an efficient runner 
that means that their demand, their energy demands can be low because they have a, a more efficient running technique rather than someone who struggles to run and is mm-hmm. all over the place mm-hmm. is going to find that their energy demand and that's, is greater. And that's, that's excluding like your weight. So, uh, well, yeah. You can put in the same weight. Yeah, so you can, put, you can have the same too. weight, you can have your same gender, same height, same everything, yet you can still be exerting a different amount of energy based on things that you can't really measure. Based, you could to a degree, on, but well, yeah, you could you could measure running gait and efficiency, but I mean, as, as in to the normal average yeah, person, is you're not going to be measuring no, that, yeah, you're not. And I think that that's something where you know now that's maybe starting to come forward in some of the um, in some of the research that's being done around actually what what's the situation here with how much calories we're getting from you know this 400 calorie meal how or 500 calorie meal and that's probably more like a snack for you mate but like generally speaking how many why are you shaking your head at me i'm hungry <laughs> that is an interesting just in time. case you guys didn't see um is that yeah. a gaming top it is also because it's pac-man isn't it unbelievable a retro game though i'm yeah. down with, i'm down with old Pac-Man. school old school yeah. So yeah, this you know this this whole kind of thought process that realistically, you know, it, we might need to go down and might need to re readdress that whole side of calories in. We already know calories out is a bit right, is a bit hard to yeah. measure, but you know calories in is now looking as if it could be a little bit hard to measure. One thing though, if something's inaccurate but it's consistently inaccurate. It still it has some value. Can be used as a, yeah. has some value as a measurement, right? Or yeah. at least a, 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 an awareness raising tool. It's like when your scale is off by like three kilos. It's always off by three. At, at least it's always. The only, the, only, <laughs> the only concern is that gradually over like the year, it, it it becomes more like five, six, seven kilos. If it continuously goes out by a little bit then, every time, then, yeah, then yeah, then we then we have a problem. You're in a little bit of a. a different now, why am I not losing weight? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think that that's you know for me, yeah, that's definitely a, a consideration, but. I've when I've worked with clients, I don't know if you've if you've had this. You kind of like get, and this this is this is a, a, a trick. This is an, an emotionally, um, this is an emotional skill. Being able to have a conversation with someone mm-hmm. that around a topic such as using my fitness pal to count calories, and detect whether it's going to be healthy for them or whether they've been doing it to the point where now it's become unhealthy for them um, and that's something that as a coach understanding the person's trait personalities whether they're neurotic whether they're you know likely to be more like they sit on the agreeable uh, scale so they're likely to go off impulsively do stuff and stuff like that knowing then how to administer the tool of calorie counting with that individual in the right way is is a skill because you need to be under, understand that person's emotions a little bit and it's, how they're likely to react. It's something you've got to be extremely wary of. Yeah. Because you can send them down a very dark road if oh. you're if you're not basically. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Been there. Been down the rabbit hole. Been there, done that. Set off all the mines. And Damn it, Will. I always do that, don't I? Damn it, Will. Oh. Dramatic pause. Here we go. So I had a conversation with a friend of mine a couple of years ago. So he came to me and was like, I bloody need help. I need to lose some weight. I said, okay, let's let's have a look. And he'd never really tracked before. Right. And I said to him, um, we've got to, we've got to have some kind of idea. Yeah. Some kind of idea. So I, and I was telling him, you know what? And most people don't realize this. Using your brain takes energy. If you're sat there doing nothing all day. Especially my brain. Yeah. You're not, your brain's not doing much in terms of using energy. And when you're like, I don't know, really trying to, stuck on, on, a, 
on your homework or revising or study, whatever it is, and your brain, Mass. you're using a bit of energy there. Your expenditures more than someone who's just watching, I don't know, EastEnders all day. You don't, you can't calculate that. And he was like, what? Your brain uses energy too? So how am I still not losing weight? I'm, I'm using all this energy. <laughs> it must be, think, you must I be think, eating a lot of food. I think quantifying how much <laughs> energy your brain uses is very difficult. I think somewhere I read it's roughly... Do not get this wrong. You need to be able to, you need to get this right. Don't give me, don't give me bullshit. Roughly 400 a day. 400 calories a day. As in like... Is, is Just that... using the brain. And I wouldn't be like, come on. Oh, you need to, you need to, you need to substantiate that in the description with a reference. Otherwise, I'm not taking. That. Okay, that's fine. Because that seems that's like fine. a lot. That and you know, like you know lot. when, you know when people say, um, you should smile. It doesn't cost a thing. Bullshit. It costs energy <laughs> and time. So does frowning, though. Exactly. And you're frowning now. So don't go telling me it don't cost nothing. Everything costs something. Energy and time. So there's research that's been um, conducted over the years about the, and it's, it's, it's definitely in like a, it's in this like kind of two, two, two camps, right? One of them is that calorie counting using fitness, um, using sorry, tracking to do so has the potential um, to create disordered eating patterns and food anxiety and can restrict people in their freedom of, of choice, okay, of what they eat and so on and so forth. So there is there is some research out there, and we'll, we'll put, I'll put the link to the paper in the description, so I like to back myself up with things that I've found in the comments that I make, not like 400 calories using the brain. Um, but basically the whole- Listen, I'm <laughs> right. I don't need to back nothing up. This whole kind of, um, emphasis of like it could be potentially harmful to someone's psychological um, approach to food but then conversely there's evidence suggests that it's not mm -hmm. so you kind of get this for this cohort of people it was completely fine for this cohort of people there was a, a statistically significant uh, indicator that it caused or was potentially a, a contributor to disordered eating patterns and like anxiety and so on and so forth. So you've you've got this kind of like two two camps. And again, going back to like you gotta deal with what's in front of you, right? You gotta coach whoever's in front of you. That person might well be in that cohort of people that it won't adversely affect. On a long term basis, they'll be absolutely fine. But then on the other side, you might have someone that will be adversely affected and that will, you know, to I struggled at times to manage my anxiety around food and I know and I can sense that yeah. now with people yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. more yeah, yeah, having yeah. gone through it. I'm not saying you have to go through that to be able to empathise because you can empathise with someone fine but the level of I can relate to someone who has as you can you know we can we can converse and we can relate to one another about that kind of um journey we went on mm -hmm. and I think that when you're dealing with people in, in, in your coaching people it, it's your duty of care to give a shit about which camp they sit in because if it's a good tool for them to use crack on fine yep. you know but if it's not then you damn well better find another way as a coach to be able to get around having to use that yep. so the idea of calorie counting for me it's always one of those situations where it's like well what do you think of calorie counting? And I'm like, well, who have I got in front of me? Yeah, so I think the message we're trying to give to the, the people watching. And listening. And listening. It's okay if you don't find calorie counting good for you. Yeah, absolutely. It's okay. Like, it's fine. If someone's coming and it's the only, it's not the only no. way. That's complete, utter bullshit. It can be very useful. Absolutely. But like I said at the beginning of this podcast, do not trade your physical, um, your mental health for your physical health. It is not a good trade. No, absolutely. At all. And I think that when, when someone asks the question, you know, should I calorie count? I often say to them, well, what do you think? 
do you think it's going to be beneficial for you? And they, generally speaking, have the answer. Mm. They go, no, I don't really want But I think it's the pressure of the fitness industry Mm -hmm. that they're second-guessing themselves. So even though they know it might not be a good idea for them, they're almost felt, they're almost made to feel guilty. That they're not. Yeah. And I think, like, you know, just, just to reiterate, though, the idea of it being a particularly good awareness raising tool I agree with Mm -hmm. you know completely and Mm -hmm. I think that there's no harm can be done through someone logging their food for a week or two weeks and then going holy shit I didn't realise I was eating that much exactly god I haven't eaten much at all you know and that kind of awareness in in an exploratory fashion using a tool which is accurate ish Ish. but it will give you a good indication anyway I think it's very, um, you know, it's, it, it can be used really, really beneficially in in that sense. And if you do want to track, and you do want to be someone who continuously tracks their food, and you feel that that's the path that you want to go down, I would I would challenge anyone who continuously tracks their food, I would challenge them to have a week off or two weeks off from tracking their food, and be honest with themselves be reflective on how they're feeling and the emotions that they're having when they're not tracking their food I like that and how does it make you feel yeah have a week off how do you feel do you feel anxious do you feel like you know you've lost control lost control do you feel like because if you do feel like that and you do feel like you're in a position where you're emotionally more unstable because you're not tracking then there might be some things that you there might be some avenues you might need to go down maybe some people you need to talk to yeah just like kind of or, or at least process like maybe being able to come away from it not tracking and be comfortable doing that I like that so challenge accepted to everyone out there because I do feel much much better that I'm not tracking sometimes it's just like uh, can't yeah. be bothered absolutely I, I do feel better with that is there anything else you wanted to add I mean no I think, I think we've covered quite a lot there you know, it's been a very exploratory podcast very enjoyable and we only got one more episode until the season ends is it one more I think it is one more yes isn't it? Yeah. yes and then you guys will have to wait a whole off season before you get the next season yeah um, please do comment you guys are still being gun shy with your comments so exactly and subscribe and on subscribe, the YouTube channel as well you know plenty of subscribers is obviously always a just we're close subscribe. we're getting there we're getting to our 100 subscriber mark so keep going guys and the, uh, and the listens are coming through on, on Spotify thank you all of you for them. that so we appreciate your support on the big drill and we will see you next time hi I'm Will and I'm Gazi and thanks for tuning in to the big drill you can also find us on these platforms here make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel You can find him on Insta, Garzy.92, and me, Will Hawkins Coaching. The links are in the description. And until the next time we drill deep, goodbye. Bye.